Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. We ascribe unto you the glory that's due your name. Hallelujah. You are the sovereign God. Hallelujah. You reign supreme. Lord, you reign alone. There is no one like you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the honor. Father, we praise your name. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 For another day, God, we give you glory. For another day, we give you praise. Hallelujah. For your goodness, for your greatness, for your majesty, for your power. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you for this time as a corporate body in your presence. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. We want you to be glorified in our worship. We want you to be glorified through the praise. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, God, for this time in your presence. Thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke and that removes the burden. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in our lungs. Hallelujah. Thank you for the breath that coming forth from our lips through which we open our mouths, through our vocal cords, and give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood that's flowing in our veins. Thank you for strengthening our limbs that enables us to stand and lift up our hands and worship you. Oh, God, we give you praise right now. Oh, God, we give you glory right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're welcome in this place. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. We pray that it will be as a sweet smell and savor in your nostrils. Hallelujah. To the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, bless the name of Jesus today. Yeah, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. It's good to be here this morning. And it's good to see those of you who have gathered this morning in worship. Hallelujah. We're going to go into uh, our scripture reading, which will be from Acts chapter 2. Uh, verse 22, and following that, our praise and worship ministry will lead us in a time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. This is the second Sunday of April 2021, the Sunday after we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You still excited? <laughs> I'm still excited. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Beginning at verse 22, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, 
freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Hallelujah. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see, this, see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. That he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you see now and hear. For David said, for David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. This is the Lord. This is the Christ that we worship today. We're here to give him glory. We're here to give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We open up our mouths. We glorify him, for he is the one who's worthy of our praise and our adoration. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we glorify you once a day. God, you poured yourself out. Hallelujah. 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 And God, we lift up our voices and we join in with all of the earth as we proclaim your mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the nations of the earth. Let the nations of the earth declare your glory. And Let the, the people of the earth. Let the earth. peoples of the earth sing forth your praise and majesty. Let all living creatures pray. Stand as one, stand as one, lift your voice and sing. Let the nations of the earth, of the earth be glad the glory and Let the people of the earth, the earth sing forth your praise and majesty. Let our living creatures great and small, with the host of heaven. Stand as one, lift one, lift your voice and sing. Arise, O God.
Hallelujah. Lord of Lords. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God. Glory to you, Jesus. You're worthy, God. God. Yes, yes. We sing your praises today, Lord God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Let's bless him in his praise. The Lord is good.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, bless the name of the Lord our God. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He reigns forever. Evermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Glory to the Lord. Name of the Lord our God. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Over every situation, he reigns. Over every circumstance, he reigns. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yeah. Let's now turn our attention to, again, the reading of the Scripture. And for your hearing, I'm going to read... From the second chapter of Acts, verses 29 through 33, and then Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And we thank God for you who have come and who are part of the worship experience this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank God for this day. I want to remind us to please, as we come observe, all of the COVID-19 protocols as far as the gathering is concerned. Uh, please, ma'am, and please, sir, don't forget that. That's still vital, still important. Amen. Uh, as the Lord reigns, he gives us wisdom, and he expects us to operate in wisdom. Amen. His reigning does not mean that we shouldn't operate in wisdom or that we should test him. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. 
So we invite people to come. Uh, if you live in the area, you're welcome. Uh, services are not restricted to the members of Tabernacle of Praise, but it's open to everyone. We just ask you to maintain the protocols. If you wear your mask, practice social distancing. If you have a fever, stay home. If you are knowingly in contact with somebody, have been in contact with someone who tested positive, stay home. Amen. We just ask you to maintain those protocols. They're so vital, so vital. I was talking with one of my good friends yesterday. His brother is uh, in the hospital on a ventilator in a community at home in the country uh, where people just refuse to stop. Some people just refuse to observe the protocols. The churches kept gathering. People kept going to parties, and young people kept going to parties, going home, infected their infected families. Uh, throughout churches, people were sick because there were people who didn't want to follow or refused to follow the protocol. So rest assured now, if we are not willing to follow protocols, and as much as I don't want to cancel services again, if we don't want to follow the protocols, if somebody gets sick, then I will have to cancel our in-person worship services again. And I don't want to do that. Amen? So it behooves each one of us to practice all protocols. Amen. And just in case, and I'm not talking to anybody specifically, all right, so I want you to get that, all right? But just in case you think that I'm being unwise and traveling, you're not on the airplane with me. You're not wearing two masks throughout 13-hour flight. You're not sitting in the front of the plane. Okay. So you don't know all of the things that I do to maintain safety. And flying on one particular airline that, that has proven their safety record and the things that they do to follow the protocols to keep their passengers safe, okay? And that's for everybody to understand, not just anybody in particular. Um, so saying that, I will be leaving for Kenya on the 19th, be in prayer with me, which is next Monday, uh, just in case you all didn't know. I mentioned it on the prayer call, mentioned it once or twice, but I did not emphasize that because I don't want to burden you uh, with financial obligations, uh, seeing that this is our founding day time, we're gonna we're gonna really celebrate next time. Y'all sit down. I'm sorry, I hate to make y'all stand up. I used to hate when preachers do that. They tell you to stand, and then they talk for another 15 minutes. But next Sunday, we will, if the Lord permits, and as I see the sunshine outside, I kind of hate our council today. Uh, but it was raining a lot yesterday, and being on the ground and what have you would have not have, I thought it would, would have been too wet for the day. Anyway, so we'll do everything next Sunday, if the Lord willing. All right, so turn your attention back to, the Lord still reigns, right? He reigns forever and evermore. Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Um, brethren, I, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is still here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. That he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Amen. And verse 33, exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. And Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. 
and a voice, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the appearance and the one who was set on there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their head. Hallelujah. I'll stop reading right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about living in resurrection season. Living in resurrection season. Amen. Lord, Lord, thank you for your word and the power of your word. Thank you, God, that when your word goes forth, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word and the things that you sent your word to. So thank you for sending your word to us today. And thank you for what your word is going to accomplish in our lives. Be glorified now. Grant me a fresh anointing of your spirit that I might minister under your anointing. Hallelujah. I thank you for your power who is at work, who lives and is at work in me and in all of us. Be glorified. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Living in the resurrection, in resurrection season. Uh, this past week, I have just been uh, constantly being motivated and stirred in the thought that the celebration of the resurrection is not a one-time event, amen? Uh, for the Christian, it's ongoing, amen? We celebrate, we celebrate the resurrection, or we should celebrate the resurrection all of the time, all of the time. Uh, and although the resurrection actually happened over 2,000 years ago, the ramifications of the resurrection uh, continue uh, until this day, amen? Uh, we are still experiencing the ramifications of the resurrection in our lives, and they will continue to be experienced by believers until the day that Jesus Christ returns in the culmination of history. Every Sunday we come together to worship, we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Every Sunday. Is Resurrection Sunday. Every Sunday we celebrate his resurrection. Even, uh, yeah, some people, some even believers today are still stuck on the Sabbath. Oh, yeah, there, there are whole churches that are, whole denominations that are stuck on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day. But when you look at the resurrection, on the seventh day, Jesus was still in the grave. He was still dead, amen? But on the first day of the week, Hallelujah. On Sunday morning, the first day of the week, amen, when Mary went to that tomb, Jesus was not there. The angel had rolled the stone away, and he said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, amen, as he said. Amen. God had raised Jesus from the dead, and so we worship on Sunday. Amen. Don't, don't get confused with that. Amen. Don't, don't get confused. This is not even in the message, but it is now. <laughs> Don't get confused by people that want to worship on Saturday. Actually, we can worship and we should worship every day. But we don't make it a law, amen, that you got to worship on Saturday, nor do we make it a law that we have to worship on Sunday. We can worship any day because, because we, we, we worship our Lord and our King. But when we make it a law that you have to worship on Saturday, we've taken ourselves back under the law. Amen. And, and when you go back under the law, Amen. Then you have to keep every jot and every tittle of the law in order to be justified. Amen. Amen. And, and you will never be able to do that. Amen. The only justification you find that you have is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't go back under the law. Amen. Amen. The Lord has delivered you. He set us free from the law of sin and death. Glory to the name of Jesus. It's good that we that we grasp that. 
Because a lot of people, and like I said, whole denomination, they've gone back and they made it a law that you got to worship on Saturday because Saturday is the Sabbath. I don't debate with you about Saturday being the Sabbath. It's the Jewish Sabbath. It ain't my Sabbath. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> and I am not Orthodox Jew. Amen. And I will not be bound by people who are misinterpreting and misled in the Scriptures. Glory to the name of Jesus. So on Sunday, glory to God, and I rejoice every Sunday morning, but I don't just rejoice on Sunday morning. I went to bed the other night, amen, I had been singing, great is thy faithfulness all afternoon, and I laid in my bed about 12, by 12.30, amen, I was singing, great is thy faithfulness, amen, morning by morning, new mercies I found, and new mercies I see, glory to God, amen, these laying in my bed, I think it was Thursday night, so I don't wait till Sunday morning to worship, glory to God, amen, I can be riding in my car. And before I look at it, I'm going about 70 miles per hour because I've been praising the name of Jesus. I said, well, let me draw up and let me draw back now because I'm, I'm breaking the law. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I don't want to get a ticket. But you know, that, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. The resurrection, Christ's resurrection is the keystone to all that we believe as Christians. Amen. Like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, he said, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. Amen. And your faith is also empty. Amen. Our preaching is futile. Our preaching is useless if Christ is not raised from the dead. And your faith is useless if Christ is not raised from the dead. He said, you are still in your sins. Then he went on to say that all those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. There is no hope. If in this life only, oh, bless the name of Jesus. Y'all hear that? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiable. Hallelujah. But because God raised Jesus from the dead, hallelujah, and he conquered death, hell, and the grave, we have hope, not just in this life, but hope for life that is to come in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So then, he, then he, he proclaims, he keeps on, he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead, amen, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now, in the order of the resurrection, what that's saying is there is more to come. If Christ is the first fruits, then there are some coming after him, amen, who will be raised from the dead, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that means that, that we too, we will die physically, but we know that this is not all. Amen. So when we mourn over people who die, amen, we, we don't weep as people who have no hope. Glory to the name of Jesus. We have hope in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When we say we're going to see, I, 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 well, you know, people need to really, really, once you begin to understand the scriptures, need to temper that because we say, I'm going to see my mama again. I pray your mama was a believer. Amen. Because Unless you, if she wasn't a believer, amen. And the Bible says the wrath of God is poured out. Did y'all pay attention to the teaching on Wednesday night? Amen. The wrath of God is poured out against all unrighteousness and those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You know, and so if mama wasn't a believer, unless you're not a believer too, You'll see again, but it won't be in heaven. Now, if you are a believer, don't be talking about you're going to see her again if she wasn't a believer. Amen. Because we don't have a blanket salvation. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Anyway, amen. Hallelujah. The resurrection, the resurrection has ongoing implications for the lives of believers in every season. Amen. Ongoing implications. Amen. The fact that Christ is risen from the dead is powerful. It is so powerful. Don't miss this. Amen. You know, people, Lord, have mercy. Uh, the Lord, give me grace to preach the sermon that he gave me as I was riding to church this morning because I might preach both of them right now. But, <laughs> but, but, but don't, 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 don't miss this. Amen. You know, sometimes when we're young and we're just living life, you know, we're not paying attention to God. We, we might come to church, 
you know, and we, we, we might do the church thing, but we're really not paying attention to God. We miss some things. The resurrection is so powerful. Ah, yeah, 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 so powerful. It, it means life after death, yes, amen, with God, but it also means more than that. It means that our faith is alive. Mm, mm, mm. It means that, that if we have, listen to this, and we quote the scripture, but it's based on the resurrection. It means that if we have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, we can actually say to the mountains in our lives, be removed and they will be cast away from us. Ooh. It means that if two of us, listen now, if two of us agree on earth about anything we ask for, it will be done by our Father in heaven. That's the power of the resurrection. And without the resurrection, this means nothing. It means nothing. Are you getting this? Amen? Amen. Jesus went on to say, for where two or three gather together in my name, there I am, the resurrected Christ. There I am in the midst. It means that we can have the abundant life that Jesus talked about in John 10 and 10. Without the resurrection, none of this means anything. With the resurrection, the power, the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead, everything he said in his word is true. My goodness, you can go and get a promise of the word and stand on it and believe God for it and wait for God to bring it to pass. He may not bring it to pass tomorrow, but God is faithful. How many of you know God is faithful? That's what I was singing the other night. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great, 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 great is thy faithfulness. And the Lord just started bringing stuff back to mind. I know you're going through some things right now, but you got to remember that the Lord is faithful. Amen. The Lord, the Lord has, has promised things in his word, amen, that you need to grasp a hold of and you need to stand on. You're going to go through some things in life. You're going to have some difficult times, but it's for your good. Because somebody say it's for my good. God never said it felt good. He said, as far you're good, count it all joy Whew. when you fall into divers' trials. My goodness. How many of you find yourself grumbling and complaining? You don't want to do it, but, but you find yourself grumbling and complaining, things you're going through that, that take so long to get out of, and you find yourself murmuring and complaining, and even asking God, God, why? God, why me? You, you, what, you should say is, what you should say is, God, why not me? Hallelujah! Because it's working something good in your life. Uh, I'm not getting much response from this. Maybe because you don't believe the word. Amen. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So it doesn't mean that we won't suffer. The resurrection doesn't mean that we won't suffer. Jesus suffered. Amen. And you know what Hebrews 5 and 8 says? Hebrews 5 and 8 says, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. That's what Hebrews 5 and 8 says. So in this process of life and the things that we go through, the Lord is teaching us to obey him. Ooh, we don't like that because we want to do what we want to do. Oh, yeah, we really want to do what we want to do. We want a life of ease. The Lord says, I'm not giving you a life of ease. Because if I gave you a life of ease, you wouldn't trust me. If I gave you a life of ease, you wouldn't grow. If I gave you a life of ease, you wouldn't care about anybody but yourself. I'm not giving you a life of ease. I'm going to allow you to go through these things. There's something in you that needs to come out of you to bless other people in the body. Amen. For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the benefit of us all. So unless I allow pressure in your life, unless I allow suffering in your life, unless I allow tribulation in your life, that thing that's inside of you will never be pressed out. And you will never be a blessing. Phew. Lord God, oh God, I know, you know, there have been times I felt like giving up. There have been times I felt like just throwing in the towel, you know. I'm even looking today, God, send me somebody, show me somebody who can take this church and take this church, because I'm ready to retire. I'm ready to stop this, but God ain't gave nobody, so I got to keep on preaching. 
Amen. I got to keep on trying to do the very best I can. You know what the Lord said to me this morning? He just gave me this word, according to the power that is at work in you. So it's not me. It's the power of the Almighty God that's at work in me. Hallelujah. And if I present myself to the Lord, then God will show up. Woo. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You don't have nothing to say until you start getting ready to open your mouth. And then the Holy Ghost just begins to bring word. Just begin, begin, begins to bring word. You're just like, you don't feel like getting out of the bed in the morning. But when you push yourself and you put your foot on the side of the bed, it seems like strength comes up in your body. It's not you, but it is the power of the Almighty God who's at work in you. And it's because of the resurrection. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah in this place? Yeah. So I've come to declare to you today that this is resurrection season. We're living in resurrection season. I mean, I did actually preach this message several years ago, but as I was praying, God brought me back to it and gave me some, some different things in here. Amen. So if you remember some of this stuff, that's all right. We don't preach to you a new gospel. If you stay in the church long enough, you're going to hear the word over and over and over again. For faith comes by and hearing by over and over. Can somebody say over and over and over again? Woo, God, I thank you. Amen. This is what the Lord showed me about this season because I, I need to move. Amen. Amen. Um, he, he took me to Revelation. And the scripture I read from Revelation chapter 4, uh, verses 1 and 2. This is the vision that the Lord showed John while he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. He had been ushered into the timeless, listen now, John had been ushered into the timeless dimension where truth and reality can clearly be seen, okay? Now, most of the time, we think that this is reality. We think that what we experience is what's real. But there's, there, there, there's there, for, for born-again people, <laughs> that, we, we experience real reality in the spirit of the Lord. You say, but this is, this is what I'm feeling time and, and, and time and space. Well, yeah, you might be feeling it, but, but this is not reality. Amen? John had been ushered into this dimension where truth and reality can clearly be discerned. Being ushered into the spiritual, timeless dimension of God's heavenly counsel means that the time uh, 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 of the events that John sees in this vision may be difficult to determine properly, okay? And a lot of people try to do that. You know, a lot of people try to read Revelation, you know, and they, they come up with all of these prophecies, prophecies from Revelation, and a lot of times people miss it because we forget that we're on this side and we don't always see clearly. Paul said, now I, I see through a glass darkly. Amen. And so even now, as I say what Paul said, as you're going through things, remember that you're seeing through a glass darkly. It's, 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 like, it's like tinted glass. It's like dark tinted glass. Amen. I just remember several years ago reading about, uh, uh, well, this is an illustration that people use in sermons, uh, about this lady. She kept looking out of, out of a window at a neighbor. And that was back during the day when people hung their clothes out on the clothesline. Some of y'all remember the clothesline. If you grew up in the country, you definitely remember the clothesline. Hallelujah. And she kept seeing dirty, dingy laundry on, on, on the clothesline. Till one day, she realized that she was looking out of a dirty window. When she washed her window... Ah, uh, she got a different perspective. So a lot of times, as I hear Paul say, now we see through a glass darkly. When I'm looking at things and I'm saying this is reality, I'm not seeing clearly. Amen. I got to get in a different dimension. I got to get on a different plane. I've got to get on a higher level, glory to the Lord, so I can see things from God's perspective. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the prophetic Glory to God. In the pathetic role that John was in, uh, he is to go back and communicate uh, God's hidden purpose to his people and to tell them what part they have to play in carrying out God's purposes. That's, that's the interpretation of, of, the, uh, of the explanation that comes out of this text. Well, this in its specific, 
specifically speaks to end time events. However, it shows us that there is a dimension where truth and reality can clearly be seen and it's not on earth. It's not on earth. It's not on earth. Remember, you know, you're looking at people and you're seeing them in the flesh. Remember what Paul said, now henceforth we know no man after the flesh. Whew. So stop seeing people after the flesh. I mean, stop wanting to know people after the flesh. You got to want to see them in the spirit, glory to God. So when I begin to look at people in the spirit, I see a different person. I see what God has placed them and the gifts that God has placed inside of them. And I see how God is using them for his glory and for his purposes and how people are blessing them. Sometimes you look at yourself and you don't even see how God is using you. Because you're looking at yourself in the flesh. You got to see from God's perspective. It's hard to get people to even think about seeing things from God's perspective. Uh, and I believe that's where that message came in this morning. Uh, but I'm going to go on and preach this message right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I wrote it down. I made a note. Thank God for iPhones. I know I wasn't supposed to be having my phone, but I had to capture that word. Amen. So I, I, I press record. Amen. And I had to speak that word. Amen. Because sometimes if you don't speak it while the Lord is giving it, you'll lose it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So let me tell you something. Hallelujah. A clear vision of God shows us that he is doing amazing things in this world around us. You know, we look at the coronavirus pandemic and some people only see the death. Some people only see the isolation. Some people only see, amen, the heartache and the pain. And yes, that has happened throughout this world. But when we look at the coronavirus pandemic, we must see from a different perspective. And we got to see how God has been moving in the midst of this pandemic. We got to see how families have had time to spend together like they never had time before. Amen. We've got to see how people have been able to, in the midst of the pandemic, do different kinds of things to reach out to people and to spread the word of God so that the kingdom of God and the message of God is still spread in this season. And there's so much more. So much more. So much more. You got to see. Think about all the projects you got done at home while you were at home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Think about new ideas that the Lord spoke while you had a time to sit down and be quiet. Because most of the time we're so busy, we don't take time to really sit and be quiet. You look at Jesus. Jesus always took time to get away and get in the presence of the Lord. And so many times we're so busy, we don't get in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I thank God for what I experience when I preach on Sundays and when we worship on Sundays. But if that's all that I got, I would be a pitiful person. I need to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because see up here, I'm, 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 I'm focused on ministering to you. Amen. But I got to get time away. Amen. I got to have my quiet time. That's why sometimes I'm at home, the television is not on. My wife will come in the house. She loves noise. I don't like noise. I can stay in the house all day long without a television. Amen. Amen. I, I don't have to listen to the radio. I can ride in my car, and it's just, it's just quiet. And when it's quiet, I can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Ooh, God, I thank you. God is doing so many mighty things. When we think about God healing, don't just think of physical healing. Think of emotional healing. Think of, 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 of spiritual healing, amen? Because if you have been overcoming with sin in your life and you've been battling sin, there needs to be some spiritual healing that takes place in your life. And only the Holy Ghost can accomplish that. Ooh. Hallelujah. God is doing awesome things. Amen. He's bringing spiritual insight in this season. He's giving revelation knowledge. He's helping us to see new possibilities and new, oppo excuse me, new opportunities in this season, causing us to understand some things that we've not understood before. Amen. Opening up deaf ears, glory to the, to the name of Jesus, bringing supernatural breakthroughs in people's lives, for some people, supernatural debt cancellation, glory to God, reconciliation and restoration. God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Amen. 
I mean, I heard a wonderful testimony that I want to give, but it ain't mine to give, so I'm going to wait till that person gives the testimony. Just, just see how miraculously that God is still moving. Can somebody say he's still moving? Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God is not just a God of yesterday. Mm. Don't let anybody deceive you and make you think that God is obsolete. Hallelujah. That's misinformation. Lies from the devil. God is a God of today. Are you listening? God is a God of tomorrow. Amen? Amen. What he's doing now is the continuation and a fulfillment of who he said he is and his perfect love uh, and his will for his people today. In your life right now. Now, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So what, what we read about in this word, amen, this word may have been recorded, amen, uh, and written down thousands of years ago. But what we read in this word, this is why the word of God is active and alive. It is living. Amen. This is not a dead word. This is the word of the Lord. It is active. It is alive. Glory to God. His word works. Do you ever speak his word over your life? Amen. His word works because it is active and alive. Amen. The Lord doesn't change. Yeah. He's opened the way for us. Amen. In this day uh, to have hope. To have help. Amen. Hallelujah. As I was looking at these texts, the Lord began to speak to me. And, and he says that, that, that many people today need to know that there is a higher plane to live on and to see from. We've been deceived to think that reality is what we're experiencing in the here and now. But that's not correct. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. Amen. Uh, Philippians 3 and 20 says, our citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Yeah, I'm a citizen of the United States, but I have dual citizenship. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. We are seated together with Christ in heavenly places, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. So you're not just seated in the sanctuary right now, but you are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. You are seated together with Christ in the heavenly realm, far above principalities and powers. Hallelujah. You are seated above the devil. You are seated above the, the, the imps, Satan and his demons. Can you get a picture of that? So that means they are under you. And when we talk about the devil being under our feet, that's where he really is. We have power over them. They overcame them by the word of the Lamb and the, the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What's the word of your testimony? What do you believe? Glory to God. What are you speaking out of your life? What words are coming forth when you go through trials and tribulations? Amen. What words come out of your life when you have been attacked, when you have been afflicted? Amen. How do you handle situations? You are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above. Ooh, one of the wonderful things studying the wrath of God is that it says that God does not deal, his wrath is not like our wrath. You get mad at somebody, you're ready to lay them out. Your, bl your blood is boiling. The pressure goes up. And not only do you think them, but when you get so hot, you start letting it flow. And you let it go. That's not God's wrath. That is not God's wrath. God doesn't act like that. Whew. Hallelujah. His wrath is determined. He'll be patient with you for a lifetime. But if you don't repent, wrath is already settled. Punishment is already fixed. Hmm. God help us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, 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 so. Yeah. Uh, as we look at the scripture, the Lord is saying to us today that it is the time for us to come to this higher plane. He said to John, come up here. Come to this level. There's some things you need to see. And he saw a door open in the heavens. Amen? Uh, and when you think of open door, you think of being able to see in, an invitation to come in. 
Amen. When your door is open, you go to somebody's house and the door's open. You may knock, but the open door is an invitation. Hallelujah. You say, well, my open door is not an invitation for you to come in. You got to wait till I say. <laughs> That's why people today have a different perspective than the older people had. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so there are things that God has for us, things that, that God is doing for us, but we've got to look in. We've got to see. I was reading uh, the other day a, a devotion on it, talking about George Beverly Shea. Some of you, are pro- you all probably remember him. And he had a dream, and thank God he said it was a dream uh, because nobody has gone to heaven to come back and tell us anything. Okay. Uh, he had a dream about going to heaven. And he saw all of these, I think he said, um, compartments. The Lord showed him all of these compartments, and he opened the compartments. He saw all of these wonderful things. And he said, what are these? And the Lord said, these were for you. And he said, I never experienced this. And he said, the Lord said, you have not because you ask not. A lot of things you don't experience. First of all, you don't know that you have them. Why don't I know that I have them? Because I'm not in the book. I got to be in the book to know that I have what God has for me. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Uh, I hope you get in the picture. I'm about to preach that second sermon. Amen. The grafted word of God. You got to get in the word. This word is meant for you to read, for you to study, for you to know, because you need to know what God has for you. I said, you have not because you asked not. He said, these things were waiting on you, but you never asked for them. Well, I didn't know they were for me because you didn't read. Mm, 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 mm. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. How many of you, go, you all are going to remember what I studied and wrote down? Everything. You're not going to remember this message, not all of it. But guess what? I wrote it. I studied it. I'm going to remember most of it, and I got the notes. I can go back and read it. What do people in church don't do? They don't take notes. They don't even write and say, Pastor, can I have the notes from your sermon? I'd like to read that again. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm, mm -mm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I learned a long time ago, I cannot remember everything I read the first time. Sitting in college, I couldn't remember what that professor said unless I took notes and went back to the book and studied. Saints, it's another dimension that we need to go through, and it's another dimension simply because it is. It is a dimension where we hunger and we thirst after righteousness until we are filled. That's this, this higher dimension. <sighs> if you're not hungering and thirsting after righteousness, you're not on that dimension. You're not there. Because when you start tasting the Word of God, it's like honey in the honeycomb. How many of you like sweets? Oh, we know we do. We know we do. Some of y'all got some cake at home. I'll bake the potato pie, put it in the freezer. (laughs) And I cut one slice at a time because I wanted it to last a long time. And I was tired of getting some weight on me, so I had to be careful about eating that whole pie because that pie was so good. Because I love sweets. And things that we love, we go after. And God says, when you begin to, when you begin to take in his word, his word, his word will be in your mouth as honey in the honeycomb, and you will want to come after it again. You'll want more of it. So the more I read the word, the more I study the word, the more I want the word. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I got a long way to go, so I better finish this message. Lord Jesus. John was on the Isle of Patmos. Banished there because of his preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he was receiving this vision, this revelation, the Lord said, come up here. I'll show you things which must take place. I've read this so many times, and each time I read it, I hear the Lord saying to the body of Christ, many of us are looking, but we're looking at wrong things. We're doing that. Because our sight line is too low. How many of you look at people and you always see wrong? You can tell about what other people are doing. 
tell, to talk about how wrong they are. Sometimes you can look at your own life and you can see all the bad things you do. And you never see any good things you do. Because your sight line is too low. Oh, God, I thank you that when you look at me, you, look, you see me in Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we're looking. We're not seeing what God is doing. We're seeing what Satan is doing. And, and you hear people testify about what the devil is doing. But I hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ring it in my spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Not down, lift up your head. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. Amen. I got to see Jesus. I got to see, not just see him, but I got to see things in this life from his perspective. God, take us up higher so we can see from your perspective. Some of us are looking, we're looking at the wrong things. We're not seeing what God is doing now because our eyes are on yesterday. Take your eyes off of yesterday. Yes, that thing happened, but take your eyes off of it. It's time to go forward. Amen? Yes, you had a bad experience in your life, but take your eyes off of it. It's time to go forward. We're living in resurrection season. Somebody say resurrection season. Hallelujah. Amen. We're living in a... Anyway, amen. Hallelujah. In this resurrection season, we are experiencing the set time of God. This is a time when God is moving in your lives, and God always has a set time to move in your life. So that's why we've got to wait on him. Israel, the Hebrew people were in bondage for 430 years, but at the set time, God delivered them. At the set time, God brought them out. At the set time, there was nothing that Pharaoh could do to keep them in bondage. In this season, whew, hallelujah, in this season, God, is, God has a set time for you. Don't just see the resurrection as an event that took place 2,000 years ago. See it as being the set time of God for that hour, all right, and see it prophetically as the set time of God for you today. Resurrection, 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 resurrection. Amen? Yes, for your salvation, but more importantly, Hallelujah, for everything that God has for you in this season and beyond. Peter declared that the things the people of God were seeing and experiencing on the day of Pentecost was because God had raised Jesus from the dead. I'm declaring to you today that the things God is still and will do in our lives is because God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I am declaring that you should see this, amen, as God set time of resurrection in and for your life, for your situation, amen, for our ministry today. Glory to the name of Jesus. I read the, song, the song, song, songs of Solomon, and Minister Smalls posted that during, the, during the, uh, the fast, during Lent. And it says, amen, see, the winter is past. Hallelujah. The rain is over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of the doves is heard in our land. I sit in my kitchen and, and the winter is up sometimes. I hear the birds singing outside. When I sit on my back porch, I hear the birds singing outside. I see the flowers blooming. I see the trees burning. And I realize that winter has passed. We're in a new season, glory to the, to the name of Jesus. God is about to do something new in this season, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I know that psalm is a love psalm, but who loves me more than Jesus? Ooh, God, help us today. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a time when God is working. God is resurrecting. There are things in your life that has died that need to be resurrected. There are things that have been lost that need to be restored. Glory to the name of Jesus. There are some things that have taken, been taken away from you. 
God is about retrieving and returning them. The devil had no business with them. The devil had no business attacking you. The devil had no business taking things away from you. But in this season of resurrection, glory to the name of Jesus, that's why we can't just celebrate resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. We've got to celebrate it every day of the week, glory to the name of Jesus. Because what God is doing in resurrection, hallelujah, amen. Uh, if you're feeling depressed and down today, remember you are living in resurrection season. God is about to restore you. God is about to return your joy. Hallelujah. He's about to restore the joy of his salvation in your life. Hallelujah. If you're going through some difficult things in your life, in the season of resurrection, God is going to do some new things in your life. Don't miss what God is doing. Mm -mm. He's moving now. Behold what God is doing now. Hear God. See God. Look. That woman, the women went to the tomb on that morning of Jesus' resurrection. God has sent the angel to roll the stone away. And I want to proclaim to you that you might have been in a tomb in your life in this past season. Felt like you were in a grave, but God has sent the angel to roll that stone away. Hallelujah. Those things that held you back, those things that ensnared you, can you catch a hold to the word of God today? And it may not be, this may not be for somebody in here. It may be for somebody who's listening on Facebook Live. Hallelujah. But God is about to roll that stone away. Hallelujah. That stone that has kept you pinned in. That stone that has kept you bound in. Can you catch the word of the Lord today? Can you allow the word of the Lord to become rhema in your life today? Now is the time for you to get up and come out of that tomb. Now is the time for you to experience resurrection in your life. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing, glory to the name of Jesus. I'm making a way in your wilderness. Hallelujah. I'm making rivers in your desert. You've been in a wilderness, but God has said, I'm making a way for you. You've been in a desert place, but God is saying, I'm about to send water in that desert place. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you right now. You've got to take your eyes off of the natural, and you've got to put your eyes back on God. You've got to come up to this higher plane, and you've got to see what God is doing in your life. Take the word of the Lord, hallelujah, and stand on the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is a strong tower in our darkest hour. The word of the Lord is active. The word of the Lord is alive. God watches over his word to perform his word. Stand on the word, but you got to be on this higher dimension. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this season of resurrection, God wants you to take your eyes off of the natural. God wants you to put your eyes on the spiritual plane. You got to see things from God's perspective. How will I ever get God's perspective? Jesus said, that David said, that word, how about what? I'll never see from God's perspective until the words get out of off the pages and get in my heart. Whew. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day. Whew. We get in trouble when we get our eyes off of the Lord. Because you can't see God physically. You got to have his word. And you got to be hidden in your heart. Whew. Resurrection means that this word is the truth. It's the truth, and I got to get it inside of me so I can begin to see from God's perspective. Oh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Resurrection season. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Whenever you battle with God about what he said in his word, you're looking from the wrong perspective. Whenever you're arguing with God, God, why can't I? Why do I have to do it this way? You're on dangerous ground. You're not seeing from God's perspective. Prayer should be, God, help me see this. Help me understand this. And the scripture that I always remember, and I learned the scripture in Philippians chapter 3, after Paul talked about wanting to know Christ, and the fellowship of his suffering, the power of the resurrection. And I, I don't count myself to know everything. I haven't reached, I haven't grasped everything. But what, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind me. Oh, Lord, that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Forgetting those things that are behind. When do we forget those things? When do we allow our minds to think on things that are noble? things that are true, things that are lovely, things that are of good report. Oh, God help us. God help us. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to that which is before me, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But that's not all that I remember from that. I think it's the next verse down. Paul says, let as many of us as are mature have this mind. And if any of you have a different perspective or otherwise minded, God will reveal even this unto you. I learned that. And so, and I remember that scripture. That scripture is like it's etched in my mind. So when I, when I come upon something that, that my, my, my flesh doesn't want to agree with, whew, I said, God, I'm otherwise minded. But your word says you're going to reveal truth to me. So God revealed the truth. Whew. Reveal. The preacher's preaching about something that I can't grasp. Holy Spirit, reveal that to me. I'm not there right now, but Holy Spirit, reveal that to me. I understand that you only have the benefit of what I say. And sometimes when you have notes, and uh, you don't always communicate everything that's in the notes. Amen. And even sometimes when you don't have notes, and, and you're still a human being, you might miss something God is saying as you communicate it. So God has to come back, and, and God has to, as he works, he has to reveal things to you. God, if I missed it, reveal it. Don't be sitting up arguing with the preacher. Ask God to reveal it. Don't be caught up in your intellectual self. Ask God to reveal it. God, reveal even this unto me. We're in resurrection season. What God has determined in his word is going to come to pass. It's real, y'all. It's going to happen. We can count on God in his word. My faith is real. My faith is secure. I heard Elder Hassan say, he said, Bishop, you know, I've, been, I've, I've said to myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see my faith work. And that's why I was talking there in faith, because a lot of us speak faith, but we don't wait to see faith work. When you're going to see your faith work, when you get in a difficult situation, you got to wait on God. You got to believe God until you don't move presumptuously. You don't move ahead of God. It might be hard. It might be difficult. You got to wait on God. I got to finish this. I got to stop. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hmm. Reading this testimony of this young man, this young man was telling me in Liberia he was sick. He was about to die, and he went to this man of God, and this man of God told him what to do. He said, Bishop, I felt like I was going to die, and I wanted to do something different, but my man of God said, no, don't change. Do this. And he said, even though it was difficult, I obeyed the man of God. And he says, I'm alive today. He said, but I thought I was going to die. Sometimes things can be difficult. But if we obey God in the midst of it, then faith, and it may not happen the way you think it's going to happen. It may not happen. But because Jesus said, because Jesus was raised from the dead, what he said in his word is true. So now, 
From now on, when there are situations that need to be worked out, don't cry about it. Find you a believer. The Lord, you said, wherever two or three of us would gather together in your name. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Whatever we ask for will be granted unto us. Read the scripture and get it right and write it down. Put it on the doorpost of your house. Put it at the head of your bed. Mm, put it on the mirror in the bathroom. Yeah, put it on the kitchen, on the refrigerator. Put it on the stove. And start touching and agreeing. Because when Jesus is in the midst, and he's the resurrected Lord, he said, because I am there in your midst, what you ask for, my Father in heaven will grant it to you. You're not putting God to the test. You're just doing what he said. Just do what he said. God raised him from the dead. You got to understand, we're living in this season every day of our lives. Don't go back to resurrection just being an event. See, I ain't talking about nobody, but you see the number of people who were here last Sunday. Because traditionally, we come to church on Easter. All of us grew up pre-pandemic days. Easter Sunday, church would be full. People buy new dresses for their children. Folks still doing that. They come to church in their Sunday best. Little girls have the nicer hats on, looking so pretty on Easter. Because tradition says, you go to church on Easter. Why don't you wear your Sunday best every Sunday? Why don't you wear your Sunday best to work? No, tradition says we do that on Easter. Whew. God help us. Let me finish this. We're living in resurrection season. In this time, in this dispensation, we are alive today. In resurrection season, and all that it means for us, all of the implications of resurrection, grasp it, embrace it, believe it, walk in it. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that when your word goes forth, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish all that you desire. Thank you, Lord, that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Thank you for sending your word to us today. Thank you for what your word will accomplish in our lives. You are God of your word. You've proven that you are true. You've proven that you are faithful. You've proven that you love us by sending Christ to die on the cross for us and to raise him from the dead on the third day. We are alive because he is alive. We can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, if there's anybody that would like to give your life to Jesus, if you're listening to us online, and you've never received Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, God raised Jesus from the dead just for you. It's a personal thing. God wants you to be saved. God wants a personal relationship with you. Personal. Personal. With you. Yes, with all of the people on the face of the earth, God can know you personally. Don't see God as you see other people because God is a spirit. God is everywhere present all of the time. He sees you. He knows you. He's reaching out to you because he wants a personal relationship with you. It's your decision. God never forces himself. 
in anyone's life. He will give you indications. You will sense a tugging on your heart. You sense a knowing that you need more out of life. And when you hear the word of God, there will be something appealing that makes you want to hear more. That's Holy Spirit drawing you. You have to respond. He's not going to force you. It is a decision of your will. So today, so today, today, as you sense the leading of the Lord, the pulling, the tugging of the Lord, will you respond? If you sense that you ought to do this, that's the Holy Spirit prompting you. Don't reject him. The more you reject him, the more difficult it is to respond. Oh, the word is so real. The word is so true. You see, the more you go after sin, the more you're going to want sin. And it'll get to the point in your life that the Lord will let you have as much as you want. And you'll find things coming at you and presenting itself to you that will make what you want so easy. That's not God. God wants you to live for him. The devil is going to fight against you. But the other side of it is true. Once you say yes, and once you start giving yourself to the Lord, and start tasting of the Lord, and start embracing his word, and seeing the truth of his word, the more of his word you want. The more you taste of him, the more you want. The more. Will you give your life to Jesus? Will you say yes to the Lord today? Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. I want to lead you in a prayer of confession. If it's your decision, if you're in the sanctuary and you want to come, if you want to be saved, you can come down front and we'll pray for you and receive you. The important thing is that you're saved, that you're in the will of God, and you start walking in his will and growing in him. So I want to lead you in this prayer. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I've never accepted you as my Lord and my Savior. But today, thank you for allowing me to see what I've not seen, to hear what I've not heard, and to believe what I've been rejecting, that you died on the cross for me, and that you want a personal relationship with me. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Save me from my sin. I yield myself to you today. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. That might seem real simple. But remember, it's a decision of your will. The Lord is waiting on you. Salvation has already been put in place. He's just been waiting on you to say yes. He's been waiting on you to accept him. Write to us. Let us know the decision that you've made so that we can follow up with you. There's more to this than just accepting and believing. We want you to grow in the Lord. We want you to know what resurrection season is all about. We want you to know what being a part of the fellowship of believers is all about. We want you to know what being in the Lord is all about. Write to us. If you don't live, if you live in this area and you want, be, want to be a part of this church family, we invite you to come and connect with us. If you don't live in this area, we're willing to try to fi- help you find a church in the area where you live, where you can connect with if you don't know one. You have to connect with a body of believers. That's where you grow. That's where you learn. 
That's the will of the Lord for you. For every believer in this house, just lift your hands. I want to pray for you today. Lord, thank you for this resurrection season that we live in day by day. Thank you, Lord, for helping us know that reality is not on this dimension. That reality is in your dimension. Thank you, God, that when you save us and fill us with your spirit, you also give us your perspective on life and living. Help us to see things always from your perspective. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we've not seen from your perspective or trusted what you showed us. Forgive us. Forgive us for times that we walked in disobedience. We walked according to the flesh and not according to your spirit. God, forgive us, please. We repent. We confess our sins. We ask you to restore us, to fill us afresh with your spirit so that we can walk according to your spirit and not according to the flesh. For anybody that's under the sound of my voice who is otherwise minded, God, reveal this message to them. Help them see what they don't see and understand what they don't understand. You said in your word that in all of our getting, we're to get and understand it. God, we touch and agree as a body of believers today that we will walk according to your spirit, that we will walk on the dimension that you called us to. Have you seated us together with Christ in heavenly places, that our minds and our spirits will be placed on a heavenly level and will speak according to what you said in your word. Bless your people now. Thank you, God, that the things that we ask touch and agree and will be done for us. Thank you for turnaround in people's lives. Thank you, God, for witty inventions. Thank you, God, for entrepreneurial ideas. Thank you, God, for financial breakthroughs. Thank you, God, for things that must be canceled in our lives so we can move forward. Thank you. Hallelujah. For even the times when you don't move the stumbling block, but you show us how to go around it. Thank you. Thank you for elevation. Thank you for progress. Thank you for advancement. In the name of Jesus. And over this ministry, we thank you that we live in the spirit and the power of the resurrection. That we will not live in yesterday, but we will live in today and we will walk into our future. And we thank you that the things that you prepared for us, for our future, are even greater than the things we've experienced in the past. Pour out of your spirit upon us anew and afresh that we will do the things that you've called us to do in the spirit of excellence that we will grow and be the people and do the things you've ordained for us to do. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Uh, we pray the blessings of the Lord upon your lives. Remember next Sunday, uh, we will celebrate our founding day. Sometimes during this week, just post some things on TOP members online or what have you about TOP. Make some comments if you have some, some positive things that you want to say about this ministry. Let the people know that we're thankful to the Lord for allowing us to experience 24 years of life and ministry. Amen. Thank God for those of you who've been with us from the beginning and everybody that came along along the way. We're grateful to the Lord. God bless you. May the Spirit of the Lord smile. Remember the two projects that we're supposed to be working on. If you brought things uh, today, please leave them because I want to send that barrel, those barrels, as soon as possible. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the email. Okay, we're helping a young man start a business. So there was a whole list of things that we need. And then the pastor who hosted the conference who's blind, I think we have some things already for that. We have the Braille Bible. We have at least one cane, maybe two canes. But there's some things we want to send for our school. 
So we can do that. We can do that in Tabernacle of Praise. Now let's do that. Between now and next Sunday, all right? Praise the Lord. God bless you. May the Spirit of the Lord smile upon you and be with you and guide you in all of your ways. He promised you never to leave us nor forsake us. He's a God of his word. We give God praise. God, thank you for this time in your presence. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.